Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Maison African Motives, uh, still working on industrial electronics and two. So in this platform, we are back uh, with the same question paper, which was written in June, 2022, uh, now on question number four. So we had the question, uh, actually 20 marks on everything. Uh, it's actually uh, something that is um, nice and easy. Let's just see what is uh, supposed to happen here. Uh, we are given on 4.1, uh, the first part 4.11 to draw a labeled circuit diagram of a common emitter transistor. So that's a common emitter transistor. Okay, so that's it. Uh, 4.11. Let's see how does a common emitter look like. Okay, so this is a common emitter transistor. Okay, uh, common eater transistor. Okay, so on this part, I'm just going to show you um, how we are supposed to have our diagram because these questions actually they do repeat. So you're supposed to know how to draw the second diagrams. Okay, so we are going to have um, our transistor, but before that, uh, look, okay, let me just show you guys. Okay, we're going to have, I'm going to start with the transistor. It's easier for me like that we've got our transistor here and uh, on the input of the transistor we've got a capacitor here uh, so let's just see if it is going to be enough we must have a capacitor here remember the capacitor supposed to be, these lines are of same size okay that's a capacitor here and uh, definitely we've got the input uh, that is the input voltage and also, we are going to have a voltage divider. So these two resistors, they represent uh, the voltage divider of the circuit, okay? So that's a voltage divider here. So we are referring to resistor one and resistor two. So this is our R1, R1, and this is our R2, and this is the first capacitor. So you're gonna name it C1. Okay, remember that's the base, the emitter and uh, the collector so here it's a common emitter so we are going to join here we're gonna have uh we have to join here so let me take it down all right so that's it that's it that's it okay guys you know uh like usually me i'm not good at these drawings but i just hope they add something to us okay so that's what we are going to have here uh, we have got your input voltage. Yes, you can indicate your input or you can just write V in. This is the input uh, voltage here. So you're going to have our input uh, from the transistor. Uh, the collector part is going to have a resistor. So you're going to have our RC here from the collector. That's our RC uh, to the output voltage, which is the VCC. Okay. And uh, the second capacitor, we're going to have a second capacitor here. All right. So we have got uh, a lot of voltages here. Uh, we said this is the capacitor from the emitter, so from the co collector. So, so that's our RC, our transistor. You can just indicate your transistor like this, or you can leave it. Uh, and what's this? You have to indicate, guys. Okay. Then uh, from there, we've got the capacitor which is on the output. So this you can write C2 or you can write C or to represent output. Okay, then your VCC uh, and definitely the output that is the V out that is going to be in between these uh, on the emitter part. So as we can see guys, a simple circuit that you're supposed to have. Uh, so the question was just for you to draw. Okay, just to draw, guys, imagine. And of course, six marks for that. Was it six marks or it was? Yes, it was six marks, actually. Uh, if you had to cross-check here, this was actually six marks. All right. So anyways, let's see the 4.12. We are now given what is the first difference between the input and output in the common emitter? Okay, so for the common emitter, it is actually 180 degrees. Okay, so that is 180 degrees. 4.13, why is a common emitter transistor, the most commonly used type of a transistor. Why is this transistor used a lot of times? Okay, so what do you think, guys, is the reason? Okay, here we know that it's reasonably having high current and voltage gain. So, okay, so let me just write it as reasonably, that's reasonably a high current and voltage. So it is got reasonably high current 
and voltage gain. Okay, so whenever we are referring to something that has got high values in terms of current and voltage gain, that's a common uh, emitter transistor, guys. Okay, 4.2, uh, draw a, a neat labeled construction. Take note, it's a construction. It's not a circuit diagram. It's a construction of the light dependent resistor, which is the LDR, not LED, the light emitting diode. No, this one, it's a depend light dependent resistor, LDR. Okay, so we just need to have the construction. How is this constructed? Okay, I'm gonna show you here how it is being constructed, the LDR. Okay, so this is 4.2. We want to construct an LDR here. So as we know, guys, we are gonna have the insulating plate uh, in this format. Okay, this format, uh, guys, you just have to pardon the way that I draw, but um, I just hope we are learning something there. We are having or we are learning something. Okay, so that's it. We have got our insulating plate here. All right, let's just make it finer. Let's just make it fine. Just join. Yeah, all right. So that's what you're gonna have. All right, so um, that's our insulating uh, plate, this one. Okay, uh, from there, then we can have um, our photoconductor now, um, uh, which is uh, the terminals, everything. Remember the layout of the terminals. Okay, but I think uh, this one, if I was going to use a ruler, it was going to take us a lot of time. So that's why I'm just drawing with free hand, but you guys are supposed to at least use a ruler there. Okay, make sure that you use a ruler, all right? And make sure that your diagrams, they are neat. Um, they are actually neat, okay? So that's what you're going to have here. Uh, from this point, we go on to the other one and so on and so on and so on, all right? So that's it here. We move on to the second one, and so on and so on. So here you just indicate at least the ones that are enough for you guys, but it's not like you're gonna have exactly the number of plates that I'm having here. No, you can just have something which is uh, at least fine for you. All right, all right, me, I'm just gonna end here, guys. I'm just going to end from this plate here. I'm just going to end here. All right, so I just hope uh, it is something else. I know guys, I'm not good at drawing, but I just hope you, you see what I'm trying to have. Okay, so like I said, that's, uh, let us write, uh, this is our insulating plate here. So you've got your insulating uh, plate. All right, uh, the terminals, okay. Uh, which is the upper and the lower. So we have got our upper here and we have got the lower here. Okay, so that's what you're going to have. And uh, definitely uh, this will be our photoconductor. Photoconductor. All right, so with this being labeled and drawn properly, you can actually obtain all the marks. When I am saying all, the marks I'm referring to the marks that we are given here, which is five marks, just five marks for that. Okay, anyways, uh, 4.3, we are now given to name and describe three classes of operating uh, amplifiers in terms of Q point on DC load line and current. Okay, uh, what are the classes of, of the operational amplifiers, which is op -M? If you are referring to an op amp, how do you describe them? How do you give them in terms of classes? That is the question here. All right, so that is our 4.3. Which class do we have? We've got the first class, which is our class A. What happens in class A in terms of the DC uh, load line? Okay, in terms of the Q point. Okay, so the Q point, 
for the class A is in the medium, okay? So you can just write the Q point is in the medium. The Q point is in the medium, all right? That's what you're going to have. Uh, what about the current? Because it's not about the Q point. There are two things that we need, the Q point and also the current. Okay, the Q point on DC load line and the current. Okay, so about the current, what then is going to happen with the current? Okay, the current is going to flow uh, in the whole entire input signal that is being amplified. Okay, so let's just write the current. Here is, okay, I'm now writing in the in my own words now, the words that, that are not uh, practical. Okay, so the current flows Okay, the whole in the whole circuit that is in the whole uh, circuit, uh, which is the entire input. Okay, being uh, okay, the entire input uh, is signal is being amplified. Okay, so it is going to be amplified there. Uh, so what is actually happening is imaging where is it imaging at it is imaging at the output terminals in its entirety so that is where it is actually being taken so we are saying imaging at the output at the output uh, terminals okay in its entirely i don't know if it is actually makes sense uh, actually like i always say me I, I i i avoid a lot of ways to run away or to get away from uh, what the department wants us to write okay anyways we've got the class b um on the class b what what is happening with the q point because it's all about the q point Okay, so the Q point is at the cutoff region this time. Okay, so the Q point is at the cutoff region. Okay, so this is what is happening now. Uh, okay, uh, what about the current now? Uh, because we want to know what is going to happen with the current. Okay, so the current this time Okay, it's going to flow, but how is it going to flow? The current uh, flows uh, through the half of the input, through half of the input, through the half of the input signal. So this is what's gonna happen there on the class B. Uh, what about the class C? We move on to the class C. So here we can even say, uh, it's just like half of the current signal is amplified. So here we can just say half of the signal, half of the current is, uh, see it is uh, actually amplified. So it's half the input, of the input signal is amplified so that's uh what you could have in terms of what in terms of current so this is in terms of what in terms of current okay so or you can just write the current flows through half of the input signal so that's it uh what the question was all about uh, which other class do we have we've got the class c okay what is happening on the class c on the class c the q point where is it located so this one is located beyond the cutoff region. Okay, so the Q point, uh, the Q point is actually beyond. Okay, so it's beyond the cutoff region. Okay, so this one is beyond the cutoff region. And what about the current? What is going to happen with the current? Okay, only a part of one half of the input is going to be amplified, just like what we had on the class B days, just uh, similar to each other here. So I'm just gonna mention what is going to happen on the current, okay? So only a part, only a part 
of one half is going to be amplified of the input. So we are referring to the input there. Uh, signal is amplified. All right. So that's what you're going to, to have actually uh, on the class uh, C. So we've got class A, class B, class C. Then the last class that you're going to have is a combination of A and B and therefore referred to as class A, B. Okay, so what happens on the class A, B? So on the class A, B, the, Q, the cut the, the Q uh, point, where is the Q point? This one is above. We said the, the C is beyond, but this one is above. So the Q point, okay, that's Q point is above uh, the cutoff region. This one is actually above. Okay, so by this, you can actually have 20 marks in this question, guys. Just imagine 20 marks on uh, question number four with that, with this information, just this information. As you can see, uh, these are the typical questions. And uh, for you to be able uh, to work out these questions, it actually needs a lot of revision as you revise question by question uh, from past exam papers. I encourage you guys to work with uh, past exam papers that can actually help you a lot to know and understand how the department wants you to have or to write your answers uh, like. And also it helps you to know typical questions that can be asked uh, from these guys. So it just needs you to be prepared for the exams which are to come from Mason African Motives till we meet again.